Sound check. Sound check. Sound check.
going live just so everybody knows. And we are live. Good afternoon. I now call the Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority City of Hamilton Liaison Committee meeting to order. Members of the public are advised that our meetings are webcast live by the City of Hamilton and archived on the city's website and that the presentations and reports considered at this meeting are available on the city's website and that members of the public can contact the clerk's office to acquire documents in an alternate format. A reminder that all electronic devices are to be switched to a non-audible function during committee meetings. Members of the committee are reminded of the five minute time limit, which will be adhered to during this meeting. Members can submit another request to speak if they require more time to ask questions or make comments. A roll call. We have quorum, uh, Mayor Eisenberger, Councillor Partridge, Councillor Pauls, Councillor Powers, uh, as well as Ian Hamilton, President and CEO of the Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority, as well as Jim Howlett and I think Jim made it in, and, and Waldez with the board. Our first item of business is ceremonial activities and the election of co-chairs. So we'll need a nomination for co-chair from the City of Hamilton and one from the uh, Port Authority side. So may I have a nomination for co-chair from the City of Hamilton, please? Yes, Councillor Powers? You are muted. It's my privilege to nominate Judy Partridge as Hamilton's representative on the uh, Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority. I'll second it. Thank you very much. What if I say no? <laughs> <laughs> All I right. Want to so, accept. Thank you. <laughs> and so, by a show of hands, all in favor? Thank you. And that passes. And may I have a nomination for co-chair from the Port Authority? Yeah, we'd uh, we'd like to nominate Ann Waldez, our chairman of the board. Thank you, Ann. And if we could have a seconder, please. Thank you, as Councillor Pauls. And all in favor. And that carries. Uh, uh, it would be my recommendation for this meeting that Councillor Partridge chair, if that is okay with you. Absolutely. Good. And I did send you the chair's procedures, Councillor Partridge. Hopefully yep, you see I've got them. them. Yep, I've got them right here. So, Madam Clerk, are there any changes to the agenda, please? No, there are no changes. All right, by a show of hands, can I have a motion to move? The agenda, thank you. Sorry, we'll need Perfect. mover and seconder on that one. Yeah, so that'll be Anne uh, Valdez and Councillor Powers. And may I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Okay, Councillor Pauls and Councillor Powers, please. Are there any declarations of interest? Seeing none. May I have a motion to approve the minutes or to put them on the floor uh, for the minutes of August 11th, 2016? I move. Ian Hamilton and uh, Anne Waldez, please. And are there any questions about the minutes? All right, seeing none, may I have uh, uh, all in favor, please? Okay, thank you very much. So we're moving on now to consent items. And the first uh, item 7.1 has to do with the committee's name was formally updated at the March 30th, 2022 council meeting. Previously, it was Hamilton Port Authority and the city of Hamilton liaison committee with the changes that have taken place over the past uh, uh, several months, it is now going to be the Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority and the City of Hamilton Liaison Committee. And there is no vote required for that. So moving on to item 10, the discussion items, we'll start with 10.1, and it is the terms of reference for the new committee. Any discussion on the terms of reference, please? Seeing none. Uh, if, oh, says here, if there are proposed changes to the terms of reference, a vote will be required. 
So, Madam Clerk, we are changing the terms of reference, so we do require a vote. If you're changing them at this meeting, they will require a vote, but um, at the last council meeting, there was a, uh, a motion because of the name change that the different terms of reference had gone. Um, so it's if there's any changes as of this meeting, then we would need to vote. Okay, and I'm not hearing or seeing that there's any changes, so we'll just move on to 10.2. Which is the Hamilton uh, Ocean? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Put Mayor. My hand yeah. up on the screen if you're watching that. If not, I can vocalize that. Uh, just a brief word, if I could. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, sir. I, I think it's worth our while to kind of review the terms of reference. I think from both the uh, the Port Authority side and the City side, in terms of, uh, you know, if this was uh, this was done quite some time ago, and I think it's uh, it's worthy of review. Not, not necessarily change for the sake of change, but I think it's worth our while for both uh, the port and the city to have a look to see if it's still uh, the the appropriate terms of reference given the times and the changes that have happened and occurred and uh, et cetera. So um, I'm not sure how you want to flow that, but I, I would highly recommend that we uh, both city and port take a, take a look at the terms of reference to determine the uh, status and any changes if, if required. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so there's, I guess, a couple of ways we could approach this. I'll just look for direction from Madam Clerk. Has every, first of all, has everybody got a copy of the terms of reference? It was in your package. And is there, you've read through the terms of reference. Is there anything that stands out or that anybody would like to either add in or take out? And Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure if you have something. I do not, no. Okay, um, yes, Ian, go ahead, please. <clears throat> yeah, just in an effort to make sure we manage expectations, the, I guess this is the second point, ensuring effective public consultation on significant decisions relating to the port and adjacent city lands. Um, <clears throat> recognizing the jurisdictions that uh, that exist in the in us being federally federally regulated, I, I think that we need to probably have a bit more clarity around what, um, what we're agreeing to in terms of um, in terms of, uh, I guess, um, significant decisions relating to the port. I, I it seems a bit ambiguous to me. I appreciate that. Thank you, um, and Madam Clerk. Can you just, uh, by way of some background, how the terms of reference were put together? Was this done at the 2016 meeting? No, it was before that. I know at the 2016 meeting, it was more of a change in composition, uh, like a, the number of councillors, but I believe right. those those first bullet points had existed prior to 2016, which unfortunately so, was before my time. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, absolutely correct. We we do need to, uh, to look over these. I didn't realize that it had been that long. And... Um, so I'm just wondering, the second bullet point, as Ian indicated, ensuring effective public consultation on significant decisions relating to the port and adjacent city lands. I'm just wondering if, Mr. Mayor, when you were when you uh, were part of the previous uh, boards, was there any discussion on on what the expectation was out of that particular um, bullet point? Uh, well, so so this is going back to 2000 almost when we uh, developed these terms of reference. So, uh, you know, my memory is really good, but it's very short. So I would say I, I, that's why I'm I'm suggesting rather than digging in that that you know both uh, Hamilton and and the Port Authority have a look at the terms of reference and you know see if there's a need for updating and more clarity or you know additional clarity and going back to uh, you know who's responsible for what and. Uh, back then, we were, uh, you know, obviously trying to avoid uh, litigation and uh, the ongoing previous lit litany of litigation that was ongoing, and we've done that quite successfully. But I think uh, I think it's important to, uh, if there's ambiguity in the document, that that for the benefit of uh, you know us moving forward on kind of joint work uh, to kind of understand and appreciate what we're both doing, uh, it would be great to have uh, any of those issues of clarity kind of sorted out sooner rather than later. That was really my point. So I'm, I'm a little hard pressed to get into details because I have to, have to be honest with you. I've not kind of looked at the entire terms of reference all, all over again. I think that's great work for some of the Port Authority staff and some of our city staff to kind of dig into and have a look at and then make some recommendations on. 
Yeah, and I appreciate that. Um, uh, Ian, you wanted to make a comment and then Councillor Powers, please. I, well, I'm, that was my first comment, but I think it, I would I would totally support um, uh, Mayor Eisenberg's recommendation because I think there's a few other areas that, uh, again, not, nothing offensive, but I think some some additional clarity would benefit everybody. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and Councillor Powers, please. So maybe the best thing is we just plain receive this and send it back and refer it back to the two organizations for their review to be brought back at uh, at a future um, meeting for further discussion. Okay, if you'd uh, like to, the mayor would like to move that motion. Would you, you second that? Would that be okay? Okay. I would be All pleased, right. certainly. All right. And uh, Madam Clerk, in terms of the uh, the date for the mo for this coming back, just to clarify, we can still operate without the terms of reference being approved because right now we're just receiving it. So, what kind of yep. uh, timeline should we put on this, please? Uh, well, the terms of reference are going to stand as are until they are changed and approved by uh, council. We. As well, we don't have a, a future meeting set up, but uh, that's flexible and at the will of the committee to set the next meeting. Yeah. So can I can I suggest that um, that this go back to our staff? If uh, Jeanette uh, Jeanette Smith, our city manager, and would that be Larissa, could work on this, and then may I suggest we put a, a meeting together for June? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeanette, does that, I can't hear you. Uh, through the chair, uh, that is perfectly great with me. Ian and I already had some discussion this morning, so. Ah, perfect, okay, so it's going to be in the right hands. Thank you very much. So um, it's been moved by the mayor and seconded by Councillor Powers. All in favor that this be received? Aye. Okay, Aye. thank you, aye. And then Madam Clerk, do we need a separate motion on the referral? Um, if, if it's easier, we can just make it the one to receive the current term yeah. and refer back to staff for meeting in June. Yeah, that, that would be, um, that would be fine. We'll just roll it all into one. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you everyone. So item 10.2, Hamilton, Oshawa Port Authority update. I'll turn it over to you, Ian, president and CEO of the Hamilton, Oshawa Port Authority with a presentation, please. Great, thanks. <clears throat> and as uh, as you brought up, um, Councillor Partridge, we uh, last time we uh, gave an update to the committee was um, we were the Hamilton Port Authority, and now we're the Hamilton Hamilton Oshawa Oshawa Port Authority, and so it expanded our um, our footprint and um, some of the impact that we can have on the uh, on the regional economy. Just to um, and I know some of these numbers are familiar with you, but uh, just to just to refresh, it's um, the cargo that goes through the Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority, which is um, well in excess of uh, three billion, and based on last year's commodity prices closer to $4 billion supports uh, 40,000 jobs in the province and, um, and many key industries still very much focused on the agriculture and the, um, and the steel sectors. Um, <clears throat> we've, um, the operating revenue is uh, is now thirty seven million dollars with a um, with an operating income of nineteen million, and that's uh, that's an important number because we are self sustaining, and all of our operating income is reinvested into our into our facilities. And I'll talk a little bit further along about uh, the capex that we have planned, and um, but all of that gets reinvested in the communities that we operate in. Um, Hamilton is um, is probably about uh, nine to ten times the size of size of Oshawa. And uh, with with Oshawa having about um, half a million metric tons, and Hamilton closer to uh, to 10.8 um, 10.8 million metric uh, metric tons. Um, from um, <clears throat> as, I, as I mentioned, the historically Hamilton has really been a um, been a steel port, but I thought this was a very interesting thing to to look at and how the evolution over the last decade has um, has how things have changed, and. A decade ago, we were doing a similar type of volume around uh, around 11 million metric tons, but almost um, almost 85 percent of that was uh, related to related to the steel industry, and the agricultural industry was extremely extremely small. Um, we go flash forward another um, another 10 years, and we're still at 11 million metric tons. Although we dipped about five years ago down to um, down to seven or eight million metric tons, but uh, now you'll see a very much different uh, composition. 
where the agricultural business has pretty much replaced the steel business. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned, Hamilton really represents the vast majority of the um, of the cargo. So it's representative of what's happening in uh, and happening in Hamilton. So it's a really um, it's been quite a um, quite a sensational evolution in the last uh, in the last decade where um, Hamilton has become a lot more uh, diversified and carrying uh, agriculture, be it um, grain exports, uh, sugar imports, fertilizer imports, and um, and seen the um, established of two food processing facilities, one with a sugar refinery and the other one with a flour flour mill. So just to um, kind of illustrate, the we, Hamilton uh, steel is still an extraordinarily important commodity to us, but um, but you'll see that there's been a uh, a big change in uh, in what that breakdown breakdown is. Um, so one of the other uh, one of our key strategies is really building a uh, an integrated port network. And really focused on how do we build the uh, the capacity overall in our system to support Ontario uh, Ontario industry. So we've um, so obviously obviously Hamilton is still our um, still the mothership, but uh, we have um, we've now got Oshawa in place and. We've started to establish operations along the Welland Canal in in Niagara, and we do have um, two facility or one facility there in um, in Thorold today. But uh, we should shortly be announcing another facility in Port Colborne and a fairly material expansion to the facility in um, in Thorold. And all of this is um, <clears throat> is really how we rebalance cargoes to find the best uh, the best sort of uh, modal and um, geographical location to handle business to minimize the environmental impact and um, increase the supply chain resilience and reduce those supply chain costs. So it has been a strategy of ours for the last five years and it's starting to, uh, you're starting to see the, um, the fruit of that, uh, that vision. And it's um, very soon we'll be, we'll have three very, very strong facilities at uh, the East end and the West end of Toronto and then into, um, into Niagara. And I guess I mentioned, um, we're um, we're really trying to do this to to create the capacity necessary to service Ontario's industry. Hamilton is, um, it is fantastic, but we are running out of uh, ability to to expand, um, and so it um, it means it means having to um, having to move into these other other locations and expand through there. We uh, we believe that by having a more united um, system systemic approach to it, that we can have a stronger voice for marine in Ontario and start to um, start to really influence policy, be it around infrastructure investments and uh, and legislative um, policy around um, around supply chains and. Over the last uh, three or four years with COVID, everyone has seen how important supply chains are, and um, we're in a we're in a very strong position to um, to really take uh, take advantage of some of the opportunities to increase marine and the uh, take advantage of the capacity in the system today. And as I mentioned, uh, better better use of modal balance so that we find um, we find the ability as much as possible to use um, to use marine so that we can we can continue to take advantage of the of the profile and marine uses about. Um, or has about one tenth the uh, the footprint as uh, as a truck in terms of um, greenhouse gas emissions, and helping us to move to carbon uh, carbon neutrality. It um, each vessel can take as much as a thousand trucks off the road, so it has a uh, has a really positive impact to keep things on the water as long as possible. But um, you can't exist with marine alone, so we really see us as part of a part of an overall equation with the three different modes: marine, rail, and uh, and truck. Um, as I mentioned, these are um, we, we really are focused on the southern Ontario area, and you can see by by this map just how um, how dense the populations are in the areas that we're serving with Oshawa restretching around to um, into Thorold into the Niagara Niagara area with Hamilton in the in the center. And the red spots are where the heavy congestion areas are. And we believe by again maximizing the use of marine, we can keep these um, keep trucks off the road as much as uh, as much as possible, or reduce the trucks on the road as much as possible, so that um, we can address some of the congestion and take advantage of some of the environmental impacts. So, as I mentioned, um, infrastructure is a huge um, a huge key to our um, to our mandate, and we have um, we have had various projects in um, in Hamilton the biggest one recently being um, being the Westport and it was a um, it's actually amounted to about a 35 million dollar investment into into the development of the lands around um, around Sherman Avenue and part of that was funded by the National Trade Corridor Fund and partially by and the other partial 
part by the Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority. And that's created new docks, rail extensions, uh, reconfigured cargo handling, and it's really building the um, the inland portion that's uh, the support lands to um, for Randall Reef. And Randall Reef is now mm -hmm. moving into its third stage of development, and we should be operational there hopefully by 2024. The uh, the impact that it's had on these parcels is um, we've doubled the um, doubled the employment that uh, that happens on those lands, increased the uh, rail car volume by 27 percent, and we're able to again double the steel that we can handle and increase the sugar sugar volumes we handle there by 500 uh, 500 percent. So it's been a um, it's been a phenomenal um, investment by the Hamilton National Port Authority and by the National Trade Corridor Fund Transport Canada, and we're really seeing the results of that now. As I, as I mentioned, one of the key areas for us is is infrastructure. And we um, ten years ago, we were probably investing in the region of five or six million dollars in infrastructure per year. And we, we in the recent years, we've put in um, closer to between twenty five and thirty million dollars, the vast majority of it going into uh, into Hamilton. And then going forward in twenty twenty two, we're um, we're anticipating over forty million dollars in infrastructure investments. So it's a um, mainly sh uh, related around um, around marine development and then building in the structures and the and the supporting infrastructure. But it's um, it's a phenomenal story, and each um, each dollar that uh, that we invest is pretty much um, multiplied by three to four times by private sector. So a forty million dollar investment for us is um, is amounting to close to a hundred and sixty million dollar investment uh, investment overall. So it's a phenomenal um, phenomenal use of both ours and um, and the capital generated from uh, from the uh, Transport Canada funds. So, just a few examples of the projects that we've been uh, we've been looking at is um, and working on. Um, we are putting a lot of money into um, the old Westinghouse building, 1632 Burlington Street, and we've done all of the roofs, put in new cranes, and uh, really modernized that structure. Um, the Fluke uh, Fluke building has been ex expanded. Um, the Sherman Avenue, we've redone all of the utilities and the utility work along there. Um, built some new covered storage, which um, helps to reduce dust um, at the FMT facility. We've uh, in Oshawa, we demolished some um, some petroleum tanks, which was a long um, long time goal of the city. Um, we've also revitalized uh, Shed 11, which is a structure. Um, structure again along uh, Pier 14 and redone Pier Pier 12, and that's just uh, that's just a few of the projects to give you an idea of the types of things that uh, that we're investing in. Um, some of the exciting stuff on the horizon. Um, you may have noticed last year we did do a short sea short sea shipping pilot, and that's um, that's really looking at uh, moving containers in and out of Hamilton, and we're in pretty um, pretty confident that we'll have. Um, more of those pilots this year is up to uh, we're targeting up to 10 and uh, we're just working closely now with the CBSA to get Hamilton approved as a container facility for import import boxes but it it'll really change dramatically the types of cargo that move through the through the city um, rather than just the bulk and the break bulk but now moving into sort of those durable fast moving consumer goods and it plays a um, it, it plays a much greater role in our um, our work with the airport and we used to be quite uh, quite far apart in terms of the types of material we handled, and uh, this I think will make us much more uh, complementary with each uh, with each other. Um, we've got um, the announcement last year, but uh, we do now have uh, Hamilton as a foreign trade zone. And I think as we move into these new commodity classes, this foreign trade zone is going to be very beneficial in helping us to add value to goods prior to um, prior to having them clear and possibly even re -ex re export them. But it's another um, another feather in the um, in Hamilton's uh, in Hamilton's cap for um, for developing business and um, and attracting new uh, new investment. Um, we've entered into a strong um, relationship with um, with McMaster University through MITL and created a a division called um, Fluid Intelligence, and that's really to analyze uh, cargo flows and analyze the uh, the data as much as possible through all the different modes, including. Um, including air, and that'll help us to understand how we find the best modal balance and how we can take advantage of um, of reducing, um, creating resilience in our supply chains, reducing uh, reducing costs and the environmental impact of um, of transportation, which is um, transportation now represents um, over 12% of the overall greenhouse gas emissions. So it's a um, it's a really great target to try to maximize that efficiency and reduce that uh, reduce that number. Um, something that we will put on the radar is 
we were, uh, to be frank, we were a little bit disappointed um, with the um, lack of consideration for some one of the alternatives in terms of the uh, downtown um, truck route uh, truck routes uh, working group that went on, and we were um, there was an alternative six that offered a um, a small concession to um, to still allowing the truck traffic to um, to move in some nice is some isolated routes in the um, in the city. One of the challenges that by by not um, by not giving this uh, in this alternative real consideration is that some of the businesses that um, have invested in Hamilton become um, become a little bit less competitive because of the additional traffic or this distance the truck drivers have to go, but it also adds to the um, adds to the increase in um, increase in truck miles and the um, environmental impact that that's going to that's going to have. Um, Again, it's something that I know has to go to council, but it's something that um, that I just wanted to uh, to put on the radar for this uh, for this committee. But I'm I'm sure you're quite familiar with that uh, with that subject. Um, Fisherman's Pier, great um, a great project that um, that we've been working on, and we have uh, we have now um, taken ownership of the lighthouse, and we're re, uh, in the process of relocating that, and taken ownership of the uh, of the keeper's cottage, and start work with the Beach Canal Lighthouse Group to um, to restore that. We're working closely with um, with yourselves and uh, Burlington and Transport Canada to try to find a solution for the uh, for the piers that would allow public access to those to those facilities. And uh, we think we're getting we're getting close to coming up with something that uh, that uh, that'll work there. But uh, that'll be an important conversation for us to talk about uh, talk about down the down the road. There's a lot of a um, lot of neat uh, other initiatives on um, on Fisherman's Pier, but uh, those are the two uh, the two short term ones. Um, last year, we we did attract the uh, the brig sailing program into into Hamilton, which is uh, now now um, two tall ships. At the time, it was only one tall ship. The uh, Playfair um, came in, and then um, uh, Blair McKeel kindly purchased the um, the Pathfinder and and put it back into the program. So now there'll be two tall ships that'll be uh, sailing uh, sailing out of Hamilton as their base. It's a uh, it's a wonderful program supporting um, supporting youth and um, really giving them a chance to. Um, to learn leadership skills while at sea, one of the one of the big goals of the program is to is to move to a large portion in excess of fifty percent that would be on um, on bursaries, which would allow a lot of um, a lot of the uh, kind of youth at risk to uh, to take advantage of it and really start to uh, start to start to develop some independence and um, and leadership skills that uh, that a sail training program can uh, can really uh, create. Um, we work closely with a lot of the different um, educational institutions, particularly in Hamilton, is uh, is Mohawk and uh, McMaster University, um, and with McMaster closely on the MITL program, and um, and with Mohawk, we've got a number of different uh, different programs in um, in shipbuilding and engineering, as well as in uh, the overall um, logistics program that they've uh, that they've created. So it's a very important. Um, Important piece of our work, and our focus is really on partnering where we can offer value that only uh, only we as a port authority can. So, in particular areas of logistics and um, and transportation, um, environmental partnerships and projects. Again, a uh, hugely uh, hugely important value of ours is um, is our commitment around sustainability. As I mentioned, Randall Reef should be ready in 2024, and that takes uh, Hamilton off the um, off the watch list for contaminated water in the Great Lakes, which is which is phenomenal news. We work closely with um, with the RBG um, and various other um, other local institutions in uh, in trying to uh, trying to support their initiatives. Um, specifically for us, we have started installing environmental charging. Uh, we do solar generation again in um, in cooperation with the city of the Hamilton Utility Corp. And another neat um, a neat project is working closely with the Chamber of Commerce and heat uh, heat recovery. Um, we do continue to recognize that we do have a challenge around um, around dust and continue to invest and try to find ways to reduce that um, reduce the any of the uh, impact on our communities that uh, that that's having and there's a there's our dust uh, dust sweeper there that we uh, we acquired and um, and now we're um, we're we're putting that uh, deploying that at least 20 hours a week to try to uh, try to keep the dust uh, at a minimum from uh, coming on and off our uh, our property um 
Uh, I think I mentioned about uh, the Randall uh, the Randall Reef project. Um, the one project that uh, on the environmental list that I, I didn't touch on, it, which is really exciting, is the refueling of ships in Hamilton um, with LNG, and that's um, the only uh, the only facility in in all of the Great Lakes that's actually. Um, offering ships the ability to refuel with LNG. And <clears throat> De Gagne, our partner on the project, and Rev LNG are um has been phenomenal because every every ship that we can fill with refill with LNG reduces the environmental impact by about 30%. So it's a great uh, a great initiative in helping us move closer to um to a net zero net zero environment. Okay, I think that's um, that's. Uh, I know I was only supposed to keep it quite uh, quite short, and it's probably longer than uh, anyone anticipated. But um, hopefully, that gives you a quick uh, quick update on um, on the initiatives and uh, the things that uh, that we're up to, and illustrates the uh, that we're very much aligned with the, with the work we're trying to do and some of the initiatives and goals of the uh, of the city of Hamilton. Ian, thank you very much. It's an excellent presentation and. Uh... We certainly weren't looking for a shorter presentation. The more information, the better. And and uh, kudos to uh, to your organization and also to the board for amazing work that uh, that you've been doing. I'm going to open it up for questions now. Um, I'm working from my home computer, so is there any hands up? Any questions? Anybody has? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, comment and a question. So, so uh, you know, the value of the port and the uh, kind of the working relationship uh, is the reason that we actually started the liaison committee so that we would, you know, both know what uh, what's going on at the port in terms of the good projects and there's many and uh, what might be impactful in terms of the projects that the city of Hamilton is doing. So I think the, the value is uh, certainly there. Uh, I'm intrigued by um, the, the short sea shipping, which I still have difficulty saying, and I did <laughs> anyone to say it five times in a row without <laughs> tripping over your tongue. Uh, but it's actually a critically uh, uh, valuable um, opportunity to put, take trucks off the road and put them onto uh, onto barge. And I, I'm, I'm assuming, Ian, that you're you're considering that kind of barge approach between uh, Hamilton and uh, and Montreal or Hamilton and uh, and Quebec City, actually. Potentially, so is it? Is that you mentioned ten pilots? Is that kind of ten large bowls of trucks that you're going to haul and hopefully demonstrate uh, the economic viability for? Yeah, the Hamilton Container Terminals is um, is our tenant who's been who's been spearheading the project. And yes, we're we're first targeting um, moving containers in or on, uh, on Marine from, um, between Hamilton and Montreal. But I think there's other markets that we really see some opportunity. And one of the huge ones is going to be between, um, Hamilton and, uh, moving cargo into the Midwest of the United States. We, um, <clears throat> that's, that's one market, which is served almost exclusively by, by truck. And I think that the, um, the value proposition of moving that onto marine is um, is pretty substantial. It's um, it's a slightly different market, whereas the right now it's all individual truckloads, so it takes a little bit more effort to to get there. But I think the uh, the return on the investment is going to be it's going to be fantastic. Uh, Quebec City is neat, um, but the other and the other area that we like to focus in on is Halifax. And for example, Halifax has just started a direct service to uh, to India, and there's a good trade relationship between Hamilton and India and the steel industry. And this could be a great opportunity to uh, to further support that. And I know that developing trade with uh, with India is one of Canada's overall priorities. So we think that this could be a neat uh, a neat development. Yeah, certainly, uh, certainly one of ours. I think uh, I think I know who you're talking about in terms of. Uh... <laughs> scrap going to uh, to India actually there's quite uh, quite a lucrative market there for uh, for that kind of movement so well done the uh, the lighting of the uh, skyway uh, has been kind of on my mind for a bunch of years ever since I met with uh, representatives from Phillips um, in in Holland actually who uh, who demonstrated not only the uh, the uh, LED effectiveness of uh, the lighting that we actually got into in, in terms of our entire city, but opportunities to uh, to highlight major structures with uh, with lighting. And so I'm assuming that you're looking at something like that. Uh, you mentioned lighting lighting the skyway, which I'm I'm sure is not just lighting the roadbed, but lighting the outline of the skyway is kind of a uh, 
a, a landmark feature. Is that what we're heading towards? Yeah, that's exactly it. That's that's probably in uh, a later phase of the Fisherman's Pier development. With uh, but it's something that uh, we've been working with um, with the um, the bridge the guy the same um, the same group anyways um, led by uh, led by Birmingham who did the um, did the lunch on the bridge that day. Um, mm -hmm. for the dinner on the bridge that day and uh, helping us to come up with some ideas and some visions around lighting it up. But yeah, no, we've taken our inspiration from from Sydney and some of the work they've done, even the, um, and uh, lighting up that bridge. But it, uh, I, I'm, I'm sitting in my office right now and I can look out and you can just imagine the spectacle all over the harbor of how good it would look with um, being being lit up, so. Be absolutely fabulous. And I, you know, I, uh, let me let me encourage you to maybe reach out to, uh... Uh, Phillips, which is a, a, a much changed company, but certainly all, obviously very, very heavily involved in uh, lighting up major structures throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, they, they made a complete uh, presentation to me at the time of all the uh, all the things they've done exactly this with landmarks that uh, get highlighted with their uh, their LED lighting. And so, uh, you know, you might want to reach out to them. And anyway, that's a that's a very, uh, I think, very good long term opportunity to. Uh, Highlight the, uh, the skyway, and then Fisherman's Pier. So we, you know, we've had some iterations in the last couple of days. Uh, we have, uh, reportedly, a uh, some champions for uh, for access to the pier and in, in the local neighborhood there. And we've been working on that as you uh, as as we've spoken about. And I think it's great that uh, that the Port Authority is taking an interest in seeing if we can pull this all together between. The Port Authority, uh, Burlington, and Hamilton. I think that would be a, a great opportunity for us to uh, not only make it uh, keep it open, but make it uh, you know more functional, more attractive uh, spaces for people to enjoy. So, I see that as kind of a natural extension of your Fisherman's Pier work. Do you see it the same way? Uh, yeah, most definitely. It was always part of our our vision at Fisherman's Pier, and we have a we have a, a working model in Oshawa whereby the uh, the pier is owned by us and then leased to the leased to the city so it um, and that's how they create the access there not saying that that's the the right model for here but I think it um, at least we've got somewhere somewhere to start um, the next step is getting uh, is getting some form of agreement with transport Canada which which I know that they're um, they're working on working on now just going back to the to the bridge and I'm delighted by your enthusiasm obviously the bridge is owned by uh, the province and I think this is an area where the liaison committee can work uh, very well together and um, in lobbying the province to um, to at least give um, give the, the green light to um, to starting the uh, starting the idea of lighting up that bridge. Yeah, why, why don't we just do it and ask for forgiveness? <laughs> Sorry, we didn't we didn't mean it. It was an accident. We just kind of threw those lights up there, and it, you know, yeah, no, absolutely. And if we can work on that together, that it would be. I mean, it's 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 in all of our interests to uh, to to kind of advance that. So uh, be happy to uh, do my part, and uh, I'm sure uh, other members of council as well to see if we can advocate. Uh, but we need a we need a uh, you know we need a kind of a mapping out a plan as to yeah. you know what that might look like. Uh, so uh, I, again, Phillips would be a good good first step if you haven't had a first step in terms of a, a supplier or provider. Uh, that might be a worthwhile conversation for you to have, but happy to happy to interact in that, and uh, let's let's get something moving. Okay. Yeah, it's great work on the Port me. Authority side, by the way. So, yeah. uh, I'm a, you know fully understanding the the uh, the need to continue to expand and and serve uh, additional markets. I think it's a really brilliant move to include Oshawa and then now Niagara and uh, and and the lands yeah. down there that they they don't really have the wherewithal or the expertise to. Capitalize on, and certainly the uh, Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority does. So it's a it's a great marriage of uh, opportunity for for all of all of those places. Quite frankly, to uh, to capitalize on some very important shipping and navigation uh, opportunities. So well done. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, I put myself on the list, but before I do that, um, Councillor Pauls, you have some questions. Go yeah, ahead, please. Thank you. Uh... Councillor, um, and through the chair, I wonder how many meetings a year have we had? Uh, I find uh, it's been a long time, and how long, how many meetings I hope I have during the year? With with the city of Hamilton? Yes. Is it? Um, I, I guess we we probably have two or three meetings a week with members of different staff. So we, but um, but 
No, it's and I think it's something that fell down a little bit during COVID. Yeah. Once a year, I would address all of council with uh, with a similar type of update as I've given, and I don't think that's happened now for. Mm -hmm. And Larissa probably remembers better than I do, but probably for for 18 months anyways. I think we did one one virtual one. Um, but I think it's uh, something that we would uh, we'd very much like to like to do again. That's good because I kind of thought, am I on that committee or not? Because it's been so long. Uh, I was uh, taken aback uh, and I thought uh, I moved the motion for the name change. And uh, then I realized I was in that committee. So yeah, I think it's more it's so important to know more about it and to have at least, uh, you know, one or two meetings. But my question is actually, and you mentioned LNG fueling with vessel. What is that? So LNG is um, li liquid natural gas, oh. and it's a um, it's a greener alternative for vessels to operate. And a company uh, named Degagne out of Quebec City uh, rec or, uh, fitted their vessels in 2013 to operate in LNG. And one of their challenges has been that they've never been able to fuel those vessels in the Great Lakes. So by us um, piling initiative, and we did one or two sailings, I think in 20, uh, 2020, and then 11 or 12 sailings in 2021. Um, and it's, um, again, it's really, it's really starting to, um, to pave the way for alternative fuels. Now, LNG is more of a transitional fuel because it's not, um, it's not carbon neutral, but it's still much better than the traditional um, bunkering that's been, that's been going on. So it's, um, it's a huge commitment we have into, into partnering with, with all of the different initiatives around um, developing new uh, new fuels for uh, for vessels be it hydrogen or ammonia um, biodiesel LNG all of which um, which we can uh, we can work on similar on that note one of the next initiatives is around shore power and developing shore power so that um, so that vessels don't run idle when they're inside of the inside of the port and they can turn off their engines and we can um, we can fundamentally power them on onshore with uh, with electricity which will keep um, keep again the conge or the um, emissions down. Well, thank you for that. It, it, not, I never heard of it, but it sounds very interesting. So thank you. Yeah. yeah and thank you. Thank you very much, Esther and, and Ian, for your answers. And, and that was one of the reasons why we felt that it was a good idea to get together because it has been a while. And as you notice, the, the previous minutes were from 2016, mm -hmm. although I'm sure there were meetings uh, after that. Um, I'm going to keep myself last on the list, so I'll go to Councillor Powers next, please. So mine is just to declare a non, you know, not a conflict of interest, but a proud grandfather is because of all the agricultural activities in not only the harbors here, but in Oshawa and uh, and down in Niagara. My eldest grandson is with the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, and in the good weather, he's up and down those ladders into the holds and checking the the manifests of all the ships so it keeps him employed and more importantly it keeps him out of the house so uh, <laughs> so thank you everyone <laughs> thank you thank you very much councillor powers and uh, anyone else before i put myself uh, on the list i don't see uh, i don't see anyone so if i can turn the chair over to ann um, I've just got a couple of questions here. Uh, Ian, excellent presentation. And, and I, you know, when we were talking about the pier, and of course there was a bit of a to-do because the Burlington side of the pier was open, according to a media report, and the Hamilton side of the pier was had a gate on it and it was locked. So I'm very encouraged that you're working towards having some discussion there. My question is on Randall Reef. To get off the watch list, what what is it what's the process to do that is that something that the port would lead that the city would lead that it would be done together can you just expand on that for me please thank you to get um so, so to be de delisted i think is the official word but um ah, I, I used i used get off the watch list but a delisted and i think it'll happen automatically what uh, the okay. next steps would be is that now that the um sort of phase two is done they'll cap any remaining material in the bottom of the um on the harbor bed um and we'll start work on the um on finishing off the surface of um of randall reef but i think it happens automatically it's be probably driven by public works because they were the project mm -hmm. lead in it and they've done a they've done a phenomenal job and um mm -hmm. in 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 the work that they've done and there was a good announcement there a few um probably about three or four weeks ago now and it's um something that um 
something that I think just just automatically happens. I know in uh, Sydney they used to be on the list, and as soon as they finished their project, they were taken off the list. So that is very good news. It's it's certainly been a long, long time coming, but uh, uh, it'll be. Judy, a, yeah. Judy, it, it's done in parallel also with the International Joint Commission for the Great Lakes. So Chris Chris McLaughlin replaced me on the IJC, and uh, and just as was indicated there, when the um, I'm going to call finality is completed, right. then the IJC removes it from their uh, from their list of uh, of how should we say greatest polluted areas in uh, in 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 the Great Lakes system. And that so it's a automatic. Default once we achieve the uh, the right right marks in class. I really appreciate that because I, I I wasn't sure if there was a process involved with documentation that you had to go through bureaucracies to try and get it done. So I appreciate that, Councillor Powers, very much. Um, my next question, Ian, you touched on the on on the um, the truck route master plan that's being done, and the, the limit being put on five axis trucks. And not allowing six access trucks, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, how big an issue is that for for the port uh, customers? Um, we're we're working on that now, and I might uh, and Larissa's really been our um, our front person on this on this file. Maybe Larissa, you can uh, you've got some uh, the numbers at uh, at hand. Um, it's the the route that it appears um, the city um, is uh, going on this file is is a big concern. Certainly, a big concern um, that has been communicated to us by our tenants as well as some others in the Bayfront industrial area. We're quite focused. I mean, we understand it's a port city plan, but we're quite focused on the um, on the impact to the Bayfront industrial area users. And in particular, the thing that um, was most concerning is the absence of a Western connection from the Western end of the Bayfront to um, the 403 and ultimately to the provinces uh, or Southern Ontario's most um, most productive agricultural areas. So that there is a there is a great flow of traffic uh, bringing um, grain from the harvest areas around Wellington County, um, mm -hmm. Essex, all those kinds of um, grain producing areas and the the destination for those um, and similarly outbound uh, fertilizer going sort of the the twin direction a lot of that is um comes from this concentration of agricultural um, infrastructure at the western end of the bayfront um to those agricultural areas and so that we were very much hoping we'd started with the sort of a broader um uh, sort of ask um and had um di dialed all of that back to the to the item that we felt was really um the most important aspect of of our um of our advocacy through through the whole process which was this western connection would would take the which would take the um uh, Cannon York route out and the um, main main in. So uh, we're we're quite um, and our and our um, industrial users quite disappointed to see that not um, attract more discussion um, through the process. We have um, and our users participated um, quite in in a number of meetings and consultations through the process. But I, I think once it got to the um, truck route subcommittee the this idea of a western connection was not entertained in any great degree and, and we found that 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 was unfortunate larissa i i very much appreciate uh, your, your explanation of that because i i you know i'm not on that uh, the truck route committee but i do understand that there were a lot of presentations that day and that that many of them centered around the the six axis and the five axis differential um and i see our city manager and, and other staff are on this particular meeting so uh, they're listening uh, to what's being said and and can perhaps follow up with uh, with other staff the only other comment i'd like to make is um ian you mentioned about the the hamilton foreign trade zone and I just wanted to give some accolades to Norm Schlien and our team and you folks uh, for 
bringing that one through the uprights because I, I think it had been taking you know quite some time uh, to get it done. So um, kudos to everybody. But my question is, um, having Hamilton as a foreign uh, foreign trade zone, what what significance is that to the to the port and to the the customers of the port? And I think, thanks, and I think we're just scratching the surface, um, but what it does is it, is it allows more flexibility in bringing goods into um, into Hamilton and being stored or even some uh, value being added to them. Then they could be re-exported or they could be um, could be held in bond until such a time as they're, as they're needed and improves, uh, improves the cash flow. Um, not necessarily just on duties, but it also allows for um, for different financial uh, financial instruments to be used to um, to finance the cargos for for import. But it, um, it it has the potential of reducing the manufacturing costs in Hamilton and then um, then re-exporting re those goods. And it just makes Hamilton that much more competitive from from our side, the port itself has a has a small benefit because any any additional imports obviously we would we would benefit from or could benefit from if they're coming through the through the port but it's really the real beneficiary is going to be um hamilton manufacturing and hamilton mm -hmm. businesses and we we, we kind of win by by default as the as the as does the city but um it's those uh, it's those industries that have the big, biggest potential to take advantage of it and I, I really appreciate that. I think anything we can do to uh, to support the manufacturing base in Hamilton, uh, which is critically important to our, our economic development. Um, my last question, and I'm going to try saying this, I'm not going to do it five mm -hmm. times, the short sea shipping, I have to really say that one slowly. Uh, I'm just delighted to hear that that is, that is coming to, um, as a container terminal, coming to the port. Um, and I understand you said it was a pilot and you've got some more happening and the mayor did touch on that. So I, I just, you know, I, I spend a fair amount of time out in Vancouver and, and, and Halifax and down in Welland. And um, yeah, just just to see the the opportunities for expansion and, and that we're really making some inroads there, um, particularly in our southern Ontario. Uh, it's just it's it's really uh, it's really great to see. So thank you very much. Those are all the questions. Oh, no, sorry. One last one. You mentioned the tall ships and the brigs and I was there for the for the uh, virtual opening of that. But you never mentioned theater tugboat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's that's another another Blair McKeel special there, and it's um, it's phenomenal <laughs> to um, to have that uh, to have that here as well. That's that's I have to I have to turn my head a little bit more, but I can see that at my window too, and it's nice yeah. to look at every day. And I think uh, it's great to see all the kids out there um, taking their picture with it in the uh, when, now that now the sun's back out. Um, I, I, I sorry, I just want to go thank thank you for recognizing the value of the short sea shipping the, because there's one other piece that again I think we can work on together. And we will be lob lobbying um, Public Works for the lift bridge to be operational in the winter months as well. Yes. And yes. that will allow for year-round service in and out of the harbour and create new opportunities, be it for both passenger and for um, for feeder services going across uh, across Lake Ontario. We're lucky to have the, uh, the Minister of Public Works local. So... Um, I think we're in a strong position to to work with them, and uh, they have to replace the deck on the bridge uh, this winter or this uh, yeah next winter. But um, but I think after that, if we can if we can really kind of push to to have that bridge open and close all winter, then I think we can attract uh, attract additional services in and out of Hamilton. That's an excellent point, and thank you very much for uh, for raising that. Uh, before I recognize the mayor, I will take the chair back from Anne, and thank you very much for that. And uh, over to you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, sure. So on the um, on the trucking piece, uh, you know, I, I think it's kind of a kind of a you know an ongoing challenge to. Uh, to realize that uh, by virtue of the fact that we didn't finish the perimeter road, which uh, we might all agree at this point, maybe we should have, and certainly, uh, but we're past that now. And I think the uh, one of the challenges that we face is as as we pedestrianize and residentialize our our downtown and inner city even more, it uh, it it just runs into conflict with. Uh, 18 wheelers kind of flying through our through our city um, uh, on a regular basis. So I, I kind of understand the sentiment. I'm sure you do as well. Um, I know it's a little bit more complicated for the uh, folks that are in the industry to move to the QEW and then uh, the the link and 
uh, QEW or wherever they need to go from there. So it, it, it does add some mileage, but I, I'm, I'm not so sure that it's excessive, but I, 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 I understand the challenge, but uh, I don't, I don't know that we can kind of reconstitute the perimeter road and that, you know, could have been, maybe should have been, uh, but isn't. Uh, and probably and will not be, and so I think we have to deal with that reality. But the and, and so, but the western access. I mean, we are you know we've got a lot of serious development happening on uh, York Boulevard now. Um, uh, James uh, James North and uh, South, and uh, I mean all of those areas are are much more uh, neighborhood oriented now than they they have been in the past, and I think it's a uh, particularly difficult to have that uh, kind of 18 wheeler kind of approach wheeling through there. So I get that. The one thing that you, sh you should be aware of in terms of, uh, and I think this is important for the port is the, uh, the Stelco lands that are kind of moving along fast and furious. And I don't know that you're having conversations with uh, Slade who are taking over the, uh, or have taken over. I'm not sure if the, the status of that, I, don't, I, I think it's closed. Maybe, maybe you have information on that. That uh, slate is taking on all the lands left over from uh, beyond the steel steel plant. So, so the current owner, uh, Alan Kestenbaum, is uh, in the process of selling all of those lands and then leasing back the steel making part. So he's committed to steel, which is great. He's also committed to Hamilton, which is great. So uh, we can, I think, continue to rely on that aspect of the important shipping and navigation part but they're also looking to uh, to repurpose those lands into uh, new viable clean commercial industrial capacity and that that's a lot of land so have you had any of the uh, conversations with uh, your neighbor uh <clears throat> yeah or, well more more so our, our future future neighbor with uh, with slate right. and we have we've spent some time uh, time with the um, with the principals there, and they certainly have expressed a real spirit of cooperation. So we're quite um, we're quite optimistic that we'd be able to work with them down the road. I think that um, as you suggested, they're they're getting close to finishing the transaction, and I think that's been where their focus has been. Um, but I suspect as soon as that transaction is over, we can we can put our heads together and try to see opportunities to. Um, to take advantage of those uh, those properties, um, and on the truck route, yes, we um, we certainly we're not um, <laughs> we're we're empathetic to the challenges of the development and uh, supportive of the developments in downtown, um, and just 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 a rough idea of where the impact is, just so that we do understand it probably adds about six hundred to seven hundred thousand truck kilometers per year. Uh -huh. Yeah, in the in, okay, in the aggregate, I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, and you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not suggesting there isn't impact, but it, uh, you know, I, I guess the, uh, the question becomes, uh, you know, where does that, that 600, 700 kilometers per year would also be flowing through our city at some level or another through our downtown. So, I think, uh, and in, in any event, I, you know what we, uh, we are where we are, and I think uh, there's. Not yet passed, and I, I believe there's a uh, an amendment coming that speaks to maybe withholding the uh, the truck change until such time as the expressway is uh, expanded. But that's uh, which I, I'm not sure that I entirely support. But that's certainly uh, something that uh, some are preparing to put on the table. So I think there's still some decisions to be made there for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, any other any other uh, comments, questions? I'm seeing none, so I'll take a, a mover and a seconder if I can ask Anne and Jim if they would move and second the motion to receive the presentation, please. I'll move. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you, Jim. And uh, all in favor, please. Okay, thank you. And moving on to uh, item 10.3, City and Port Authority Shared Goals and Priorities. When uh, Madam Clerk and I were, were discussing, you know, the agenda and the fact that we hadn't met for some time, and I wondered if the committee wanted to have a discussion on the City and Port Shared Goals and Priorities. We've kind of done that throughout the presentation. And... Um, uh, but but I'm I'm wondering if we do you know we have outstanding business lists for some of our other uh, committees that we have that just list the projects that are being 
uh, being worked on. And, and I'm wondering um, if I can hear some comments, please, on, on the approach to that. And, you know, do we have staff put a list together of uh, some of the things that have come up in conversation and bring it to the June meeting? I'd just like to hear some comments, please. Maybe, Raise your maybe, hand. Yes. maybe I can I can start, but um, we do yep. in terms of um, dealing with our sort of day to day operational files. We I, I believe we have one of the strongest relationships in the country between a yep. municipality and a, and a port authority. But um, and so we um, with Jeanette and I certainly talk. Well, officially, probably every other month, but we probably talk every three weeks and uh, go through those files. And I think there's a, a strong spirit of uh, spirit of cooperation and shared uh, shared set of uh, set of goals that uh, that uh, we um, we really do complement uh, complement each other. The institutions do. Yeah, and that and that's been very clear. I think throughout the uh, throughout the meeting. Um, but from my, what I was thinking is just you know there's some some kind of key ones that you have mentioned. Um, even in the discussion of this meeting, it's not, you know, wanting a list of everything that you're working on with staff. Um, you know, quite, quite frankly, we're, uh, we're too busy <laughs> to really look at that. But um, I just, you know, do we already have that? Is that something that, that is necessary for, um, for, this, uh, for this committee? Mr. Mayor, please go ahead. Yeah, just to uh, to reinforce the uh, relationship has been uh, actually quite brilliant all the way through. I think mm -hmm. I think what you're you're speaking to has more uh, more of an alignment issue with uh, economic development and our economic development teams. And I think uh, you know there are there could be and and I know there is <laughs> ongoing conversations with economic development. So so the agribusiness that uh, that you know we see the growth in was actually inspired by. The city of Hamilton is saying we want to create a you know a food food cluster and uh, and from that uh, you know we've seen you know add-ons like the flour flour mill and the sugar and and others and so there's been a complementary kind of approach to that and I think it's a kind of one feeds the other as we as we diversify our economy the uh, the ability for the port to diversify its its uh, capabilities is also diversified at the same time so I think we're I think we're in sync with that, but I think it's more about our economic development team uh, having a good uh, on, ongoing working relationship with the uh, Port Authority development team. And I think that is, uh, I think at this point, pretty robust. I see Norm is popping up there in his uh, yeah. blue and green room there. Um, and, you know, I, I think it'd be worthwhile for maybe him to speak to, uh, you know, the kind of the, the ongoing relationship, because that's where it's most key and that's where it's most impact impactful is on the economic development side. So. Yeah. Right. And that, yeah, and that certainly um, uh, Norm, welcome. And uh, if you want to give a, a bit of an update and perhaps it's just at each meeting, having a bit of an update uh, from the economic development side, we don't need reports and things like that unless members yep. want to see that. But Norm, can you update us a bit, please? Certainly, and, and through the chair, um, as, as Ian mentioned, um, you know, earlier he said, you know, we're probably in contact about two or three times a week. I'd say that at least one of the two or two of those three times is through the economic development team. Uh, yeah. We have a very strong relationship with, with Ian's, Ian's group. Um, in fact, we were in their boardroom just uh, a week and a half ago with an international delegation that's uh, contemplating investment here in the city. And um, uh, his team came to the table with uh, you know, some great locations, some great ways to, to move product. And uh, I mean, that's just the ongoing discussions, whether it's space, whether it's mutual initiatives, we've, uh, they're a key partner in our economic development strategy. There's a couple of actions within the economic development action plan that actually are directly related to the port. Uh, they circulated our employment survey to their port tenants. Uh, it's just an ongoing dialogue. Uh, Ian and I meet at least once a month um, and uh, uh, to, to, to talk and catch up on things, but it's always, an, um, you know, members of my team are constantly reaching out to, to Ian's, Ian's group uh, as well. So uh, I think it's a very solid, I like to think we have a very solid relationship with our, with our partners at the port and, uh, and look forward to uh, seeing if we can land some of these uh, big investments that we've been dealing with. Thanks. You know, and, and that's, that's excellent. Thank you, Norm. It, it is, you know, certainly we, we know how well everybody works together and, it, and it's, I mean, one can't work without the other, without that kind of shared uh, collaboration. Um, so appreciate your your update, Let me, uh, Mr. Mayor. Could, go ahead. Yeah, if yeah. I could uh, just kind of put a bow on it, I think I think there's value in, and we have a strong relationship uh, through economic development with Niagara, 
mm -hmm. yeah. and its component parts. And I think it's worth our while to uh, to have more conversation around that because uh, yeah. you know a lot of the opportunity that comes through our port facilities actually is now going to be landing in partly in Oshawa, but partly in Niagara and our. Maybe Norm again. You can you can speak to uh, you know our, our kind of active relationship uh, from uh, from city to to Niagara region in terms of economic development and how we might uh, might kind of broaden this conversation out by uh, including some of their uh, initiatives as part of our discussion. Excellent. And and, and certainly uh, through the chair, uh, we have actually there is a. Uh, um, formal in relationship with Niagara, it's called the Invest Hamilton Niagara Partnership, uh, and so we do re work on a lot of uh, a lot of initiatives, whether it be uh, uh, in incoming investment or international investment. Uh, we partner with our our, our counterparts uh, within the Niagara region, um, and uh, you, you know, as 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 the Port Authority uh, got into the relationship uh, with Niagara region, that was probably toward the beginning of the. Uh, uh, beginning of the pandemic in, in earnest and we really haven't had uh, uh, a meeting of the partnership in, in the last little while to talk about the opportunities and synergies that could exist so mr mayor that would be a very good step for us to to further engage with niagara and, and see how we can uh, all, all three of us uh, work together that's great thanks you know so i uh, you know i think i think from a kind of a shared goal perspective i think we're pretty solid in terms of uh on the same page, moving together, uh, we should think about how do we include Niagara as part, you know, as a partner in, in the, the overall kind of shipping activities to, to the greater benefit of all of us, quite frankly. So I think, uh, you know, if there's a follow up uh, opportunity to do that, I think uh, Norm can help flush that out. No, and that's excellent, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm really glad we had this discussion because, you know, it, it makes sense to bring Niagara into uh, into that conversation because we do so much uh, working together. Um, and I was also pleased, Ian, to hear, I mean, of course you collaborate with the airport, but uh, the, they're wonderful folks up there to work with, you know, since Kathy's taken over and Cole's come in. Um, so we'll move on to the next thing and I, I we won't, Madam Clerk. Can, can, can I ask one last question? And, you sure, know, yeah, absolutely, uh, yep. Star shipping truck air rail. There was a time where we had a kind of a working group that kind of represented all those areas, so that we uh, were, you know, actually working in a, in a complementary way. I think you do that as out of necessity. But is that is that a kind of a group that uh, is still getting together and talking about the future of uh, movement of goods in our community? Norm, Ian. <sighs> I'm going to have to say, I don't think so, because I've never heard of it. Um, <laughs> well, so it's gone. It's gone. But um, well, me, uh, one of the studies. Than, have... You know, wasting good air on that. Let me just suggest that it's, it's I think it's a worthwhile uh, initiative based on, you know, even what, uh, what Judy was saying about the airport. I mean, shipping, trucking, airport and uh, railroad industry, uh, you know, is, is, is converging in Hamilton and uh, has converged at Hamilton. And there was a time where we were having those conversations. Norm might know maybe a little bit more about that, uh, you know, previously, but uh, I think it's worthwhile to kind of continue to bring that kind of a group together in terms of working groups that can talk about uh, shared opportunities. That's my thought. Norm, yeah, do, you have, yeah. do you recall? Norm? There are through the chair there there are a few different groups that that are out there um uh, the hamilton transportation club was was one but it was more of a i don't want to say a social social club but it um it did bring the various uh, service providers together and as well the master institute for transportation logistics often has a lot of you know although it's a little more on the research side uh th there are a group but in terms of a formal transportation group right now i I have to go back and take a look to see if there's anything that's been been reconstituted. But uh, if Ian doesn't recall, uh, I, I don't know if I don't know if there would be one. Mr. Mayor, could we uh, do? Would you like Norm to bring something back to the June meeting? Just on, just not a report, but just a, an update. Yeah, I think it's worth it's worth looking at, and uh, you know, my my memory is you know as short as anybody else's. So, uh, you know, I, I I do recall it was uh, it might have been sponsored through. The Chamber of Commerce, actually. Uh, mm. so I, I, I was wondering I, about that. Yeah. So it'd be, it'd be worthwhile to have a look, but I mean, I, I think it's a valuable, another valuable tool. Not that everybody wants to have meetings all the time, but there's, 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 you know, there's, there's cohesion. Cohesion there could be very valuable for uh, for all the partners mm -hmm. that are working through that, and certainly all of those uh, areas are are heavily involved in the uh, movement of goods and 
moving now faster and quicker than ever before. So it's worth our while to make sure that uh, everyone gets their part. So Norm, you'll take that as a direction to come back to the June meeting. Thank you very much. And uh, Madam Clerk, you'll include that in the agenda coming up for June. Yes, I will. All right, and then Madam Clerk will just uh, get in touch with everyone to check calendars and schedules and uh, probably towards the uh, towards the mid to end of June uh, time frame if that works. Any other discussion? This has been uh, very good. All right, seeing none. Any other business? Speak now or forever hold your peace. That's it. Okay. So when, so when do we put the lights up on the sky? Right? Me and you, Ian. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think I think that might be one of these joint projects we work yeah. on. <laughs> you can stand on my That's shoulder. That's the list I was talking up. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim, Howl Jim Howlett and I put them up while we were having the meeting. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking flashlights. I'm talking real lights. <laughs> Very efficient, everyone. Thank you. May I take a motion to adjourn? If there's no other business, please. Moved by Councillor Pauls, Councillor Powers, all in favor? Carried. Good discussion, everyone. Thank you so much. Good meeting. Thank you. We'll talk again in June. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you.